uh, folks, I, I cannot remember a day like this probably uh, in my entire life, let alone in my uh, in my trading career. We're gonna we got to talk about some stuff. Does, does anybody else know what happened today, or actually followed what happened? The the leader, the president of the United States, the leader of the free world, just stood in front of every other you know, essentially just about every nation in the world and said he's going to destroy another nation. Let me let, me let that sink in. What did the market do? <laughs> the market's up. The volatility index is down as President Donald Trump threatened to destroy Rocket Man from North Korea. Folks, you can't, you can't make this stuff up. There's Hurricane. I'm down here in South Florida, folks. Down here in uh, Boca Raton, Irma, uh, last week, a massive uh, earthquake in Mexico. It really does feel like the end of days here. But guess what? Who cares? BTFD, right? Buy the effing dip. Buy the frigging dip. That's going to work, folks, until it doesn't. And I'm here today to scare the hell out of you because we're going to talk about hedging. We're going to talk about hedging this ridiculous rally that we're sitting uh, in the middle of. And I'm going to give you a strategic brief. Folks, at the end of the day, trading's a form of combat. There's a winner and there's the loser, period. It's, it's, it's a zero-sum game. And with my background, I had to be on the winning side, obviously, a hell of a lot more than the losing side, or I wouldn't be talking to you to you uh, right now. As uh, Renee said, my name is Matthew Buckley. You guys can call me Wiz for our uh, short time that we have together right now. Flew the Hornet for 15 years to the United States Navy, graduated from the Navy Fighter Weapons School, and also flew 44 combat sorties uh, over Iraq. Got to fly in the back of a MiG in, uh, in Pakistan. Actually, it was a, let's see, China stole the MiG from Russia made their own, and then Pakistan bought it. So I guess it's a, a stolen MIG knockoff. Um, got to fly with the Blue Angels in the number four slot position, and then also there's uh, there's me flying over, just leaving Iraq on the port side of this picture, and there's Kuwait City uh, underneath me as I head back out to the ship, folks. So how did I go from the you know the cockpit to the trading pit, man? Very very interesting story. But how are you doing today? Hopefully you're doing good. I sent out a, a weekly bear call spread to my uh, subscribers yesterday, to my members. That's up 600 bucks. Just uh, look at this. We sent this out yesterday. By Friday, risking about 5,500 bucks to potentially make two grand. Uh, at the open today, this thing was already uh, up 500 and was at 575, $600. So how am I doing? I'm doing great. But I, if, like I said, if I don't scare the hell out of you in this webinar and you don't throw on some hedges, I, I can't help you when this thing implodes. It's not a matter of if, but when this market's going to go south, folks. So I was always interested in, uh, in serving my country. I was a, you know, one of six poor Irish Catholic kids from South Jersey. And uh, my parents raised me, uh, you know, service above self. Put your country first. I was always interested in finance, though. My dad taught me about stocks. And, hey, you know, Matthew, if you go buy a, ha you know, a Happy Meal from McDonald's and, you know, the stock could go up. So instead of, you know, spending my downtime sitting in the ready room uh, of my fighter squadron playing foosball or, you know, talking about, sex, politics, or anything else we weren't supposed to talk about, I was always interested in finance. So I applied everything that I was learning flying a fighter aircraft, having a strategy, being disciplined, contingency planning, debriefing uh, after a mission or after a trade, and figuring out what went right and what went wrong. And guess what happened? That methodology and my returns allowed me to pop up on the radar of one of the largest volatility arbitrage options trading firms in the entire world. Everybody should know what that building is. That's, uh, well, it says it right there. That's the CBOT, folks. That's the Chicago Board of Trade. That's the intersection of Jackson and LaSalle in Chicago. So uh, I at peak six investments. Incredible firm, incredible people, uh, probably one, one of the best times of my life. So I helped uh, essentially run uh, Peak Six Investments, two and a half billion dollar volatility arbitrage firm, little old retail options trader, Matthew Wiz Buckley, just like you sitting here on this webinar. And the only difference between you and I is the methodologies that I used. And I'm going to teach you a little bit about that today. And then hopefully if you uh, do a drive by of Topkin Options this week, because we're in the middle actually of our full throttle launch. Uh, this week, I'm opening up the doors to my squadron, a full week of live trading and training on me. You can come see how we do it. I was also the founder and the CEO of the Options News Network, ONN.TV. 
Many of you remember that. It, it was essentially the CNBC uh, for options. It was had a blast. I hosted a bunch of the shows, giving retail traders such as yourself a behind the scenes look at uh, at what was going in the options uh, options world. No offense to anybody from Chicago on this webinar, uh, but uh, yeah, and I did feel like uh, Valentine in trading places. But no offense, folks, you can keep the winners, man. Winners suck. I'm a I'm a beach guy. I'm a I, so I, I picked up my uh, my junior squadron mates and we moved down here. Uh, to uh, South Florida in about 2010, where I started Topkin Options. So Topkin Options has been around uh, since 2010, and we've literally trained thousands upon thousands of retail traders, options traders of all skill levels. Whether you're a Marine buddy of mine who can't even spell the word options, <laughs> or a Jedi master uh, who thinks you're good, uh, we can make you better here at, uh, at TGO. So here's what I wanna talk about today. I'm gonna talk about my trading methodology, a seven step trade plan, and then we're gonna jump in the market uh, real quick, hopefully uh, before the close or even after the market close here. You gotta throw a hedge on guys. If you don't think that the, the leader of the free world standing in front of the UN and saying he's gonna obliterate uh, a, another country it, and the market goes up, we're nuts. You're absolutely nuts if you are not hedged in this market. And using days like today when the market goes up, it, with a lot of these recent events, a Comey memo, a fire and fury, uh, you know, comment out of Trump. It seems like the, the market didn't believe it. And then a day later, the market imploded. It finally woke up and said, holy crap, what did that guy say? Or what just happened? And then we see a 200, 300 point sell off. So folks, do not think that, uh, you know, just because the market went up today, that it's not going to wake up and go, oh my God, he just more or less just threatened to kill I, what, 10, 15 million North Koreans. It's nuts. I've never seen this before, folks. And when a guy like me, it's like when I'm flying on an airliner with my kids. When there's turbulence, they always look at me. 99.9% .9 of the time, I just give them a look like, uh, relax. When I get worried in turbulence, you should have your seatbelt strapped so tight that you're, it's, it cl cuts off blood to your legs, okay? That's how I'm feeling about this market right now. Now, don't get me wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I'm a, I hope I don't need any of these hedges, but guess what? It's like having a gun, folks. It's better to have one when you need it than to not have one and want it. Okay, real quick, 2016, epic year. Why was 2016? These are based on $100,000 model portfolios at Topkin Options. 125% return on risk in the PLTB, 188 grand. The urgent alert and the weekly option service returned about 106%, 121. And here's my embarrassing portfolio uh, from last year. Are you ready for this? How embarrassing my retirement portfolio. 101% return on risk, 100, about 100 grand even, folks. Can I get a hell yeah if you wouldn't, even the retirement, portfolio. Would any of you like to, most of you would give your right arm to see 101% return for the entire time uh, of your, <laughs> of your uh, that, that you have a retirement portfolio. We did that in one year. One of the reasons we did that in one year was because I made a career call. I was one of, I guess you could call it a hand, literally you can count on one hand the number of people who got this right. Uh, Jeffrey Gunlock, uh, who manages Double Line Capital, a $95 billion hedge fund. Yours truly, Matthew Buckley, and a couple other folks. Nailed what? The election of Donald Trump. I said, Donald Trump, uh, last fall, I told all my members, one of the reasons I knew why, folks, this, these are year-to-date returns. I'm gonna flash through these real quick, because I, I, I wanna tell you, I also give keynotes. I work with companies, I do consulting, I do keynotes, I go into Fortune 500 companies, mom and pop tire stores, you name it, and I help them improve their execution. Guess what? All last fall, I talked to real Americans, something the liberal media and the pollsters never do. I knew Donald Trump was going to win. People would come up to me and whisper like, uh, you know, hey Wiz, I'm voting for Trump. And I'm like, why are you whispering? People were afraid that if like somebody found out, they'd hit him in the head with a shovel or they'd be like they are called today, a racist. So I told my members, I said, folks, not only is Goldman Sachs, City, Morgan Stanley and all these guys lying to your face, saying that Hillary is gonna win. Uh, and, it, and if Trump somehow by the grace of the devil wins, the market's gonna implode 15%. I said the exact opposite is going to happen. I said, not only is Trump going to win, there will be a 10 to 15% market rally. So Lloyd Blank, Fiend, Jamie Dimon, all the guys, all those Wall Street blue bloods were wrong. Yours truly nailed it. 
I put trades in our and put the Goldman Sachs, uh, Morgan Stanley, all the guys who actually got the election wrong. I got long the financials. We had members who did 20 contract trades on a Goldman Sachs long call diagonal that made $150,000 on one trade in Goldman Sachs that I recommended. So folks, the guy, one of the few guys literally on this planet who predicted that last year and got it right is now telling you he's freaked the hell out. Real quick, it, it, if it sounds like I'm Superman, I'm not, guys. We, <laughs> losing trades happen. I've had my share of crappy trades. A professional trader wants to win 60% 60, 60 of the time. That, that's about the average. The average at TGO as of uh, the close yesterday was about a 74% win rate, folks. But listen to me. Let me channel my inner Rumsfeld because I want to warn you about something. If you come to any of these presentations and somebody just beats their chest the whole time about how great, run. Run as fast as you can. Three weeks ago, I couldn't hit the broad side of a barn with, uh, barn with some of my weekly options trades. So you know what I did? I put myself on the bench and watched. Okay? So let me channel my inner Rumsfeld. Didn't like the guy, but he had a good quote. Because trading is combat, I already told you this. But in combat, folks, he said, hey, man, there are known knowns. There are things that we know we know. Then he said there are known unknowns. There are things we know we don't know. And then finally, this was the best part of this Rumsfeld-ism. He said, there are unknown unknowns, too. Now, if you're scratching your head, let me give you an example hate this example, but it's perfect. I put on a Google, I'll never call it alphabet just because of this. I put on a Google weekly options trade about, what was it, a year and a half, two years ago, whenever the hell it was. After the close, I go down the street to my gym, get on the treadmill, I turn on Comedy Central, which I, I call CNBC, and what happens? After hours news out of Google, they're, they're changing their name to alphabet. Socks up 5% in after hours trading. Got blown out of that trade, lost five grand. I laughed. My immediate reaction and the next day when the market opened was laughter. The hell are you laughing at with? You lost five grand. There's nothing I could have done about that. And it's stupid. It's like FedEx changing its name to Fred Smith Incorporated. Nobody will ever call it that. It'll always be FedEx. It doesn't matter. So guys, losing trades happen. I got them. You got them. Everybody got them. Don't think everything's uh, sunshine and lollipop. So I just wanted to get that out of the way uh, too. Okay. Here's my methodology real quick. Most of you listening to this uh, webinar today, and I appreciate you, uh, I know it's been a long day for many of you, they saved the best for last, right? Are very, very tactical, right? The average retail trader is very, very tactical. You wake up, grab your coffee in the morning, put on your bunny slippers, turn on CNBC and go, okay, uh, let me find some trade ideas. It's ridiculous. You don't even know what you're doing for lunch, let alone all the way out to January of 2019. Not me, folks. We did a primary live trade brief this morning. We're actually put on a long call diagonal uh, out to Gen 19 on Facebook. So very, very tactical. What I'm going to teach you at Topkin Options is SOT, strategic, operational, and tactical. And, all, and for the sake of time, this is going to be very quick. I'm going to give you a strategic brief in a couple minutes. What's going on around the world? The fact that our president just threatened another country with absolute nuclear destruction. Uh, Iran is watching this. Of course, Iran was sitting there. He smacked them around a little bit too. Iran either right now or is going to get nuclear weapons and they have promised to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. They will do it, folks. This is absolutely incredible. Incredible day. So let me give you a quick strategic brief and then we're gonna get operational. I'm gonna talk about what's going on here in the United States. We have a Fed meeting tomorrow, folks. Janet, Janet Yellen, is uh, embarking on the great unwind. Their balance sheet is absolutely ginormous. And guess what th they have to do? They gotta get rid of it, folks. So then I'm gonna give you an operational brief. What's going on in the United States? I call it peeling back the onion, okay? Strategic, operational, and then what can we do? What can we do after we have situational awareness, okay? We can trade, we can get tactical. That's the only time you can trade, folks. How many of you are probably sitting here scratching your head right now going, where are the trades? That ain't how you should be trading, folks. And if that is how you trade, you're not going to be a good top gun options member. Pretend you're an, an admiral or a general in the, uh, in the, in the Navy or, 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 and, and this young lieutenant's giving you, I wish I was, this young lieutenant's giving you a strategic and operational brief so you can make 
tactical decisions. Trading's a form of combat, folks. You don't want to be this dude. And if you are this dude, you better have ejected out of the airplane a hell of a lot uh, you know, longer, uh, sooner uh, than this picture was taken, okay? We don't want to be this guy. We want to be uh, the guy that shot him down, okay? Real quick, this acronym, um, not fear 2017. Let me, let me just ripple through this because it's North Korea, oil, Trump, the Fed, earnings, Asia, and Russia. Write that acronym down, folks, because if you're not trading or hedged or, or in these areas, you're, 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 you're doing it wrong, okay? Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to, uh, you know what, let me, I want to show you that picture real quick. See this Canadian F-18 pilot? He was practicing for an air show. He was at 200 feet, very low airspeed, very low altitude, demonstrating the slow flight uh, handling capabilities of the, of the F-18 Hornet. All of a sudden, his left engine quit. You see that, th those, that nozzle right there wide open, and this one, that one's producing thrust, that one ain't. This guy ejected, and they calculated if he had waited a half a second longer, just a half a second longer, he would have ejected straight into the ground. Let me ask you a question real quick, and I want to see all your answers. When did this Royal Canadian Air Force pilot make the decision to eject from this airplane? Go. Let me see your answers. I always find this interesting. Let me see. When did this guy decide to eject from the aircraft? A couple of you got it. That's exactly right. Some of you, no, not when his engine quit, folks, absolutely not. He'd be dead. That half a blink of an eye was the difference between life or death. You know when he made this decision to eject? In the brief, before he ever got in the plane. My point I'm making with this is, when I put out a trade alert or when I talk about a trade that I'm gonna do right now, we have got to make the decision about when we're getting out for max profit or min loss exactly in the brief, okay? So here we go, quick strategic and operational brief, and then we're gonna, uh, we're gonna press forward here. I gotta tell you folks, it really does seem like the end of days. I'm down here, I got power two or three days ago. Southeast Florida got, technically got hit with a tropical storm. It wasn't even a hurricane. That was the west side of the, of the state. I just got power back. Mexico, uh, Los Angeles, earthquake. And, uh, we got more hurricanes coming. We have the president saying he's gonna, he's gonna level another country with nuclear weapons. What the hell is going on here, man? Look at this. Every pullback of this market year to date has been political. You ready for this? It just aged off the left side of the chart here, but this was the first failure of the idiot Republicans. To re I, I'm a recovering Republican, folks. I'm a libertarian, can't stand them. Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell, they voted to repeal Obamacare 63 times under Obama. Failed twice under Trump, don't get me started. There's the infamous Comey pullback. Everybody remember this? Oh my God, Jim Comey has a memo that the president maybe made him scared. Market implodes, buy the dip. This is when I figured out that Jim Comey is a felon, and he is, by the way. Here's the Don Jr. emails, the market imploded. Here's the fire and fury comments from the president, market imploded. And here's when the, oh my God, Trump's a racist. I think Gary Kahn and Steve Mnuchin, the treasury secretary, are gonna resign. They didn't. Every pullback this year has been political, either domestic or geopolitical. So if you ain't trading politics, folks, you're trading wrong. Not one of these pullbacks has been bad earnings. Not one of these pullbacks has been uh, the Fed raised interest rates. Not one of these has been in what I'd call an old market pullback. I will tell you, if I was sitting in the, and this is why I'm furious absolutely furious that, Je well, Ben Bernanke uh, got involved in capitalism, folks. The Fed, a decade after the crash, is about to embark on the great unwinding. Whenever you see the words, something is entering uncharted territory in the Wall Street Journal, what should you think about immediately as an options trader? Let me ask this again slowly because I want to see your answers to see if you understand what I'm talking about. The Fed, blah, 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 Entering uncharted territory. What would that tell you in the market? Volatility is a, should be going higher. 
Donald Trump saying he's going to kill an entire nation of people. The Fed entering uncharted territory, unwinding their ginormous balance sheet. Over a beer, we can talk about it, folks. I was one, uh, uh, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, they sh should have all burnt to the ground. Instead, the Federal Reserve got involved in capitalism, and our markets will never be the same. This is like the Pope. I'm a Catholic, recovering Catholic. It's like the Pope going out and saying, you know what, Catholics? God, we got that wrong for centuries. There is no hell. What the hell would happen? Talk about a party. That's what the market is doing. This market believes there is a put underneath it called the federal government. And folks, I'm here to tell you, when the market loses faith that that put is going to be there, this is going to hell in a handbasket. For the past couple months, I have told my members that I think it's going to be October. Something will be done to North Korea in October. We have two, if you ask me, lunatics uh, on both sides, Trump and North Korea. We're going to keep our nukes. You're not going to be able to keep your nukes. There ain't no middle there, folks. Our UN ambassador, I hope she runs for president. She's awesome. The Nikki Haley, she's awesome. I hope she runs for president. Her and Ivanka, uh, president, vice president. She said, you know what? The Secretary of Defense, General Mattis, will take care of North Korea. I'm done. We've kicked this can so far down the road that we've run out of road. What is going to happen, ladies and gentlemen? I also, October is usually one of the most volatile months anyway, guys. But uh, I thought the debt ceiling, uh, you know, Trump outflunk, uh, outflanked Ryan McConnell, didn't he, guys? He said, you know what? I'll do a deal with, uh, with, uh, with Chuck and Nancy. So there is not going to be a, a debt ceiling fight in October. So that part of you know October volatility, I think, is going to go away. But it's going to come back. Merry Christmas, folks. We're going to have a debt ceiling fight around uh, you know Christmas. Um, what else is going on? Uh, good headline in uh, Zero Hedge. Bulls have come become completely desensitized to risk. Stocks, the VIX at a nine handle, folks. I was in the board of trade when it hit 80 or 90, whatever the hell it was that day. Nine single digits on the VIX is absolutely insane. And we're going to talk about volatility in a second because if you're not long October VIX calls and SPY puts, you're nuts. Um, tomorrow's the Fed. Tomorrow's when Janet's going to let us know what she's doing with her balance sheet and Senate Republicans. The, 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 you know, the, the guys that can't shoot straight are still trying to figure out what the hell they're doing with the, uh, with the tax cut. I don't think we're going to get a tax cut this year, folks. And this is a hope and change rally, not Barack Hussein Obama's hope and change. But I mean, no kidding. This rally is built on hope. Hope that Donald Trump can get Obamacare repealed. Hope that Donald Trump can get tax reform and hope that he can get infrastructure spending. None of that's happened. So there's going to become, on the right side of this chart, guys, in this big white space, is a reckoning. I feel like I'm in a Western, but it's the truth, okay? Uh, you know, I, I get it. A broken clock is right twice a day. Trust me, I am no I, – I, I've ridden this thing, man. I call it a hold-your-nose rally. I'm Gordon Geck. I'm, folks, I wear two suits at Top Gun Options, a flight suit, All-American, and then I wear my Gordon Gecko $6,000 Armani. This is a hold-your-nose rally. I'll buy the hell out of this thing. And hold my nose. But as when I throw on my flight suit, I'm going to tell you this rally is not, it, it's almost un American, man. If this were pre 2008, pre financial tsunami, when the government got involved in capitalism, the VIX would have went up to 70 today when the president did what he did at the UN. It's at nine. It's at nine. So there you go. That was an extremely abbreviated strategic and operational brief. Let me get tactical and trade. Starting to make sense, isn't it? S-O-T, strategic, operational, tactical. Let's bring up the VIX. Let's bring up a chart of the volatility index. Let me get rid of my drawings from my earlier uh, live trade brief. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the, let me ask you, what, is the, what has been the average VIX since 1993, since we, they started a VIX? Does anybody know? You should know. What is the average VIX? Bueller, come on, folks. I know it's the end of the day. Wake up. Let's go. This is important, guys. I'm trying to help you out here. It's a 20. Did you hear me? Two zero. Double what we are right now. Hurricanes, earthquakes, nuclear war, 
with North Korea, Iran getting nuclear weapons, haven't even talked about oil. Ladies and gentlemen, the volatility index, I, I call it its resting heart rate. The resting heart rate of the VIX, I don't know, maybe been about an 11. And then what happens? Something freaks the market out and then it goes away. Remember folks, the VIX isn't like a stock. It doesn't go up and up and up and up. It, it reverts to its mean. The, I'm gonna go work out after this webinar. I can jump on the treadmill at a 10 incline at 10 miles an hour. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I can do that for about 30 seconds, guys, before I have a heart attack. So volatility doesn't stay elevated forever. It eventually, what? Comes back in. We are below our resting heart rate, guys, and it is time to get long vol. Write this down. You ready? When vol is cheap, you buy it. When it's expensive, up here in the upper teens, you sell it. Whether it was the Brexit or the election, my members printed money doing a trade that's called a bullish double vertical on the way up and a bearish double vertical on the way down. But at this point, guys, I, here's what we need to do. I'd go out to October. When? I don't know. If you want to, first of all, let's look at the volume and op look at the uh, open interest in some of these. Let's look at double the VIX. Ladies, let me grab my little spotlight here, guys. Let's look at 20. The, the, let's go with the, oops, sorry about that. Let me get rid of this one. Uh, let's go, I don't know. Let's just stick the middle of the month, October 18th. I'm throwing a dart here. Let's go double what we are today, up to 20. Look at the open interest and the volume, guys. 311,000 calls. Now, the smart people in the audience go, you don't know if those are bought or sold. I can tell you a fact, since I know for a fact, that 99% of these calls in here ain't short. They're long. Look at this. Look at the VIX at 15 out to October. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeffrey Gunlock, my, my spirit animal who, who also predicted the Trump win and Trump rally, my buddy, said if he doesn't make 400% on his S&P 500 puts in October, he'd be disappointed. There is a hell of a lot of quote smart money betting that volatility is not only going to double let me let me open uh, let me open up the strikes here guys uh, but, but, but how many uh, let me pull this one up it, my options house one it's a little uh oops nope i like this this is a little bit better e-trade destroyed uh, options house can't stand it i helped build options house when i was up in the chicago board of trade at peak six and e-trade sucks uh let me show all the strikes here on the vix out to october look at this look at look at the 20 <laughs> you can't make this up folks vix at 25 look at the open interest that's quadrupling, almost quadrupling, where, or, or three times where we are right now. Do I have your attention, guys? If you aren't, uh, R. Angelus, good, good comments. I completely agree with everything you're writing here. Folks, I have been telling my members to get in here and buy some VIX. Call. Look how cheap these things are. Look at the 30s, 109,000. Just the, even the 25s are what, 17 cents? I would be buying a with both handfuls VIX calls right here you I mean buy them at the ask I mean well I, I can't do that in, in this one account so folks my first trade recommendation for you is I mean where's the where's VIX 20 311 just look I've never before in my end I've been doing this for 25 years guys before Al Gore invented the internet never before in my trading career have I seen this much upside call buying in the VIX exactly that's a great way to put it I'm amazed but not surprised whoever wrote that that's exactly right however comma I'm surprised whenever I still go out to give speeches and I talk to retail traders they look at me like I, I have three heads what are you talking about getting long volatility folks by October, VIX calls, double where the VIX is right now, or if you're even cheaper, buy the 30s. Something, take just, guys, look at the chart. Something has happened every month, year to date, to freak the market the hell out. And every time, I call it, you guys remember watching uh, 
Sanford and Son, don't you? Uh, he, every episode, it seems like he grab his heart and say, oh, it's the big one, Elizabeth, I'm coming. Every time we thought it was the big one, didn't we? And every time it was, I, I knew it wasn't the big one. You guys can watch when you become a member, all my recordings. I said, BTFD, this is not the big one. Jim Comey implosion, I said, the guy's a felon. He lied under oath or he didn't do his job as FBI director and he's a felon. I turned out to be right. The uh, fire and fury comments, I said by the Steve Cohn and uh, or Steve Mnuchin and Gary Cohn leaving. I said by all these, I said by. We are running out of altitude up here, folks. We are getting look at all of these. After we rip through the 50 day moving average, all of these rallies have done what? Leveled off, leveled off, leveled off. The next way, the, the, next, the risk now, guys, is to the downside, okay? So my first trade recommendation to you is to buy double. I, I, I wouldn't even buy double. I'd go out to that 25 strike. Oops, wrong platform. The 25 strike. And again, I'll, I'll tell you in a couple minutes, like I told you, our full throttle launches this week. I opened up all week this week. It's free for you to attend all of Topkin Options live trade briefs. And I'll show you that link in a second. I'm not even, I'm, I'm not, not even gonna try and sell you anything because I care. Now, here's the other thing you need to be doing. You have got to be buying S&P 500 puts. If it's cheaper for you, obviously you can uh, buy SPY. Well, which, what, what, which one should I buy? Again, let's go out to the middle of October, right there. Now, what would, I'm not gonna put all in here. Let me do, uh, most people say, you know, hey, a bear market or an absolute disaster would be what? If the market imploded. Folks, we haven't seen, what is it, greater than a 5% pullback in four years, whatever. I, I can't even, it's been so long, you can't even remember. I remember flying up to Chicago a couple months ago and, and, and talking to some of my old partners. They're like, Wiz, we're terrified. We have 28, 29 year old traders managing huge books who have never seen a down market. Let that sink in, folks. Doesn't that make sense? The financial tsunami hit when? It hit 2008-ish, didn't it? We have people, kids that were, it, they were kids. Now they're 28, 29, 30-year-old portfolio managers that, uh, that have never seen a down market. So when, not if the market starts to implode, there will be no liquidity. There will be an absolute panic to get out of positions and you won't be able to. So I would even look at cheap, uh, you know, 10% underneath where we are right now. What, what are we at? Uh, let's just say 25. The 225s right here. You know what? Actually, let me do open it up to all here. I would be looking at, let's just go to the, uh, I would be buying puts right around, that's the 50 day moving average right here, guys. I'd be buying puts right around that 200 day moving average, which is what, the 20, 2378 on the S&P, uh, on SPX. I trade SPX, guys. I don't trade uh, SPY. Aaron, uh, what's the uh, the difference between SPX puts and VIX calls? What's better? Aaron, those, it's a great question. It's two different types of hedges. One, the uh, when I'm talking about buying some SPX, or SPY puts, I'm talking about a market pulling back, okay? Let me get rid of some of these strikes here. A market pulling back. Let me pull this up. This happening, one of these. You see these big red things right here? Buying puts is, is protection or means you'll make money when one of these big red things happens next. Now, buying VIX calls means you're betting that uncertainty is going to go up. That's a, this is a great question, Aaron. And I'm, I love doing this. I'm gonna play stump the chump right now. I think I have to go back to a 10 year chart here. I do. I wish, how do I, I, would, I wish I could zoom in right here. You ready? But here's, here's your Obama teachable moment, folks. This is gonna show you something really, really cool about volatility. In June, I remember I was given a keynote to Bank of America Merrill Lynch in San Francisco. It, we actually, I, we stopped the keynote to watch the Fed speak. The market, you ready for this, guys? Everybody sit up and answer this question. The VIX went from where it is right now, essentially 10, it went up to like 22. 
It doubled in a couple days. Let me ask you all a question. The VIX doubled in a couple days from 10 to 20. Was the market going up or down? Answer, no. Was the market going up or down when the VIX doubled? Nick says up. Steve says up. And then we have a whole lot of downs. Nick, Steve, you guys get the gold stars. The market was not going down when the VIX doubled from 10 to 20. You know what was going on? This was the first Fed meeting. Does everybody remember Ben Bernanke and the Fed buying $85 billion a month in what was it called? Quantitative easing. This was the first Fed meeting where the market thought he might what? Everybody remembers this word, taper. Everybody remember that? So before this Fed meeting, the VIX doubled because of what? Uncertainty. So that was a very long answer to your short question, but this is an important thing to know about volatility. 80% of the time, the VIX will go up as the market goes down. But guess what? 20% of the time, you can print money, and I'll teach you how to do it, when it's, you ready? Write this down. Market up, VIX up, something is up. Yes, I'll say that one more time. You ready? Market up, VIX up, something is up. Everybody remember this right here? Right around the Brexit, folks. What was our market doing? Went up. What did I do? I got long volatility. I didn't know how the hell the, the, uh, the, the Brits were going to vote, whether they'd stay, to, uh, stay or leave. But what happened with volatility? Uncertainty went up. So ladies and gentlemen, here's your, your huge Obama takeaway. Uh, for this um, is buying SPY or SPX puts is a hedge in case the market goes down. That's it. That, that's why we call them downside puts. Okay. Buying VIX calls is a bet that exactly uncertainty is going to increase. Does everybody, this is huge. Good. I'm seeing a lot of positive comments. People, this is if this is new to you, a lot of you, you found a home at Topkin Options. I, I'm going to show you how to uh, how you can spend the rest of the uh, week with us, or even watch the replays uh, of the of the tr the brief we did last night and and the brief we did today, um, because I, I'm I'm going to teach you all this. Today we put on a uh, we put on an Apple bull put spread that's looking really really good, and we have on that weekly options S and P 500 uh, bear calls for. You know what? Let me do that now since uh, I want to keep. I know Renee's had a long day, and uh, and I'm uh, I only go to 4:15. So guys, here's what I'm going to do. Don't want to sell you anything. This is my cordial invitation to if Renee, if you can post that for everybody, that'd be great. This is and then here's the replay page. So do me a favor and just register if you want to see what we do here at Top Gun Options. Um, there's a registration page. It's really easy to remember. Go. Topgunoptions.com slash join ft that means join full throttle and for the rest of the week guys we'll uh, uh we'll i'll show you I'll, I'll show you this stuff live uh tomorrow at one o'clock we have a uh, accelerated retirement brief we, and we have training the rest of the week and everything like that so folks please I, I hope you got something out of it like i said you can watch the replay on this page it's the same type of url url go dot topgunoptions.com slash ft replay full throttle replay okay so those are the two links you want to attend our live trade briefs for the rest of the week go ahead and sign up here uh and then uh, actually here's what's pretty cool I'll, I'll give you a free opcl this is called the options pocket checklist the opcl i never went flying with the f-18 flight manual guys it's just it's it's ginormous it's huge so uh, we squeezed it into a, in a good quick reference guide. And then I'm also going to give you access to our trade plan. That What's that? 40, that's like $90 uh, of our proprietary manuals uh, just for signing up to attend uh, our things. But uh, I strongly, I strongly recommend you watch the sessions that we did uh, this morning. 
where we do an Apple bull, it says right here, Apple bull put spread and that Facebook long call diagonal. Uh, and then last night we did our, uh, we did our in brief where I talk a little bit more in depth about what I did today, the strategic operational tactical and our seven step uh, trade plan uh, methodology. Okay. Uh, Aaron, in this crazy market with low VIX, even today, it is crazy, man. It seems like SPX is a better trade than VIX calls. I would do both. Aaron, these are, they're cheap, folks. When you see a day like today when the president threatens to destroy another sovereign country and the market goes up and the VIX is essentially flat, why not do both? Because guys, when, and I'll say it again, when, not if, this market rolls over right about here. The VIX, when you look at these pullbacks here, guys, these were violent. The VIX can go up 20, 30% in the blink of an eye. So not only are you gonna potentially make money on those puts on SPX or SPY, you're gonna make money on those VIX calls. I would do both because they're that cheap, ladies and gentlemen. I wouldn't I wouldn't exclude one for the other. I do both, Aaron, okay? But guys, uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm. I'm a Hornet pilot, folks. On time, on target. It's 16:15 on the east coast of these once United States. So I'm gonna wrap it up and and, and give it back to Renee. Just do me a favor. Head to go.topkinoptions.com/slash/joinft and uh, and you can grab a slot to trade with us uh, the rest of the week for free on me. And then, like I said, head to FT Replay and you can watch the brief I did this morning and get the two free trades on Apple and Facebook uh, that I did. Okay, you're welcome guys. Yeah, uh, awesome. Thank you for all the kind words.